Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. When it comes to synthesizers, I am still quite an amateur. My keyboard playing skills are terrible, music theory remains a total mystery to me, but whenever I see an electronic musical instrument, I turn into an over-enthusiastic golden retriever on a Christmas morning. However, I spend more time behind mixing consoles than is deemed safe by any Western health authority, and I am far less forgiving when it comes to mixes, especially digital ones. Today we are going to talk about the Roland MX-1 Mix Performer. This 2015 compact mixing desk, home studio backbone, live performance centerpiece and undisputed final boss of the IRA range was designed for seamless integration with one of my favorite synths of all time, so I'm both intrigued and very very skeptical. At the first glance, someone messed up the TR8 IKEA DIY kit. Classic IRA design with a hint of red and blue, plenty of faders, knobs and buttons and a 16-step sequencer that can't be used for sequencing external gear. The MX-1 was primarily designed for use with its IRA brethren, and integration is well thought out for the most part. Take your TR8 TB3 <laughs> System 1 Voice transformer or a second MX-1, hook it up via USB and invisible Roland Minions will take care of both MIDI and audio connections. Sweet! TR8 is stereo only though. USB port 3 even provides enough juice to charge your phone or power one of the smaller IRA siblings. A respectable list of other Roland gear was added in firmware updates, including all boutiques except for the only one I have right here. Here. Unfortunately, class compliant gear doesn't work either. Non Roland instruments can be integrated using the analog inputs and 5 pin MIDI connectors. Four mono jacks and one stereo mini jack input are not much and you will have to get one of the voice transformers if you need a microphone input. There's an SPDIF digital in, ideal for mini disc. The MX-1 is all about total integration of hardware and software and things get really interesting as soon as you connect the mixer to a computer via USB. All 18 channels can be recorded in your DAW of choice and the machine presents itself as six MIDI interfaces. In normal operation mode, one stereo output of your DAW is pre-routed to the last stereo channel and you can send computer audio to the digital and USB channels when they are not connected. Technicalities aside, this is a performance mixer and it's supposed to be played. Position of the mute buttons totally makes sense in a live situation. The faders feel a little cheap, they are short but they turn green once you unmute a channel and you can assign a wide range of response curves to them. I like the dedicated tone filter knobs and you can choose a different filter isolator EQ behavior for each channel. Changing channel settings is easy. Select one or more channels, pick a parameter like gain or pan and dial it in with a value knob on the left. FX are an integral part of the MX-1 workflow. Assign channels to an FX section, in this case beat FX, define per channel intensity, punch in a sequencer pattern, et voila, trans gates. EDM side chain ducking and rhythmic filter FX. Master FX includes the infamous scatter, roll, filter, bit crush, delay. 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 And Flanger. Combi mode lets you mix and match these FX rhythmically.
I'm still trying to cope with the fact that Roland didn't include any real FX though. No bread and butter delay on an FX send, no channel or bus compressors, no real EQ and, worst of all, no reverb. You can, however, add an external FX unit using the stereo aux send return, which is RCA connectors only. Roland implemented some features that are clearly aimed at the DJ crowd, like a headphone mixing knob and tempo nudge. Snapshots are much appreciated and although the preset mastering section won't replace bob cuts anytime soon, results are better than what I did for the first 10 years of my audio engineering career. Hardware instruments are not your thing, the MX-1 can act as an 18-channel out-of-the-box mixer for your DAW and a dedicated Ableton Live controller. You just have to turn it off and on while performing cargo cult rituals with the almost display-less UI of the mixer. Roland user manuals have a long tradition of being a major PITA and the MX-1 comes with not one but five manuals that still manage to omit essential essential functionality of the machine, so please forgive me if your favorite feature didn't make it into this video. The MX-1 has already been discontinued, but local music tech retailer Klangfarbe still had one lonesome floor model. Thanks for making this possible once again. It's never easy to tie together a music production setup and the MX-1 seems like an elegant solution for fans of Roland gear. Did they dumb it down too much? You have already heard the MX-1's effects in today's intro tune. Let's call it a proof of concept. As a big fan of the TB3, I'm looking forward to using it as it was intended by the manufacturer. in the red, that's the mastering section. I have no complaints about the overall sound quality of the MX-1, but even when using plenty of compatible gear, setups are not as clean and tidy as one might hope for. Time to max out all channels of the MX-1 in a hybrid Ableton analog drum machine setup. <laughs> a mixed bag. While the MX-1 itself is rock solid, Ableton lost connection a few times. The mixer is super playable, but I was missing basic processing like compression to glue the drum sounds together. It's easy to intertwine pre-processed signals with the channel filters though. If there is one thing that defines the sound of the MX-1, it's the FX. Let's throw together the smooth sweeps of French filter funk, the relentless sidechain pumping of American EDM, UK red Retro breaks choppage and the stuttering synth pads of Dutch trance to create a concoction that, I blame it on the hot weather, will inevitably end up in some kind of vintage house. Again.
understand the allure of the MX-1. Seamless integration of hardware instruments and a DAW, easy operation and a versatile production centerpiece with a reputation of a renowned manufacturer are quite a value proposition. However, chances are that you will run into limitations soon. No routing metrics, no subgroups, minimalist FX and connectivity and a plasticky feel made me wish for a classic 90s Mackie pawn shop processor setup quite a few times. There aren't many contemporary hardware mixers on the market that were designed with electronic music production and synthesis in mind, that aren't either DJ gear, modular or pure and expensive analog awesomeness. In spite of all the criticism, I would say the MX-1 is the winner today, with the Korg Welcome Mix coming in as a close second. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.